Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome back to my channel, Canterbury Cottage. Recently, a viewer requested that I show how to make a three-tiered tray. And I thought to myself, if I'm going to make a tiered tray in a video, it has to meet three requirements. Number one, it has to be really large. Number two, it has to be super sturdy. And number three, it has to be made in a way that you have never seen before. Well, today's tray met all of my requirements. So I can't wait to show you how it turned out. But I also have 15 other projects to show you. Some DIY decor that is perfect for displaying on your tiered tray. Well, if you're ready, let's get started. To make my tray, I picked up two large wood boxes at my local Goodwill. My plan was to use both the lid and the base of the hinged box and use the larger wooden paper tray as the base for the tiered trays. I measured and made a pencil line on all four sides of each box and then cut down the sides using my jigsaw. I decided to cut down a wooden cigar box that I already had to create a smaller tray to put on the top. I used my orbital sander to smooth out the edges of all the three trays that I had cut. Then I used my miter saw to cut down some spindles that have been in my garage for so long that I don't actually remember what piece of furniture they came from, but I'm pretty sure it was something that I found on the curb. I also cut four square pieces off of the spindles to create feet for the bottom tray. I used wood glue to attach the feet to the underside of the bottom tray. I marked the center of the middle and the top trays, and then I used wood glue to attach spindles to both of those trays. I let the wood glue dry overnight, and the next day I began joining the tiers together using long wood screws. In a couple spots, you'll have to rely on the wood glue or a few brad nails shot in at an angle to hold everything together. But wood glue is extremely strong once it is dry. I painted the entire thing with two coats of Waverly chalk paint in mineral. Instead of using caulk, I filled in the joints with super glue. I figured it would not only fill in the cracks, but it would also add to the sturdiness of the trays. Once the glue dried, I painted over it. I distressed the trays and spindles a little bit using 220 grit sandpaper, and then I applied a coat of white wax, wiping off the excess with a rag. I'm pleased with how cute it turned out, but I'm even more pleased with just how sturdy it is. I'll be able to put some very heavy items on this without any trouble. I like to mix up sizes and shapes of objects that I put on tiered trays, so I wanted to make something with this wood round from the Dollar Tree. I painted the edges of the wood round with two coats of cashew chalk paint, and then I printed out this adorable man in the moon image from the Graphics Fairy website. I applied a light, thin coat of Mod Podge to the piece of wood and to the back of the image, and then I adhered the image to the wood round, smoothing out any wrinkles. I always print out my images just a tiny bit bigger than the object, and then I cut off the excess and smooth the edges with sandpaper. If you have trouble with wrinkling, let it dry before you apply the top coat of Mod Podge. 
I just love this man in the moon's facial expression. For the next project, we're going to make a miniature scale. You're going to need a small thrifted alarm clock. Begin by unscrewing any screws that you see and then begin disassembling the clock. We're only going to be using the body piece so you can get rid of everything else. You'll need two small blocks of wood, one for the base and one for the back. The back should be a little taller than the clock. Super glue these pieces together. Super glue your glass or clear plastic piece back into the face of the clock. Print out this vintage scale face image to fit inside your clock. Place it in against the glass and then I used a little hot glue around the edges to hold it in place. Super glue two small wood blocks to the back wood block and then glue a large metal lid from a canister to the two small blocks. Cover the glass clock face with some painter's tape and then give it a couple coats of black spray paint. When the paint was dry, I decided to distress it a bit with some sandpaper. The super glue spray accelerator actually caused some discoloration of my plastic clock face, but I didn't mind because I thought it added to the vintage appearance of the scale. For the next project, I cut up a couple old paperback books into smaller rectangles using my miter saw. If you don't have a miter saw, you can cut your books with scissors or a utility knife. It just takes a little longer. If you use a miter saw, you'll probably want to sand down the frayed edges a bit. To create covers for my three miniature books, I cut some blank pages out of another old book to print my images on. I taped the pages to a piece of cardstock, and then I selected the images I wanted to use. The New York Public Library has an endless selection of book images. I'll link the ones I used in the description box below. After cutting out the images, I applied a thin coat of Mod Podge to the back of each image, and then adhered them to the top of each miniature book. Smooth out any wrinkles and trim up the edges as needed. I wouldn't recommend applying a top coat of Mod Podge as the paper is likely to wrinkle and it's just not really needed. Style your books however you like. I tied mine together using some ivory lace from Dollar Tree. These turned out even better than I hoped. I don't think you can tell that these are not the actual books they appear to be. Here is a super easy idea for adding a playful element to your tiered trays. Remove the feet and trim the feathers on the underside of a fake bird. Then add a dollop of hot glue and adhere it to an old wooden spool of thread. Pull the end of the thread out and using a small drop of hot glue, adhere the thread to the bird's beak. Use birds and thread in colors that coordinate with your decor. Both Hobby Lobby and Dollar Tree usually have a nice selection of fake birds. The idea for the next project came from my dear friend Dee Dee. Using old sheet music or dictionary pages, cut out simple daisy shapes. To save time, I used my Cricut. Take a long piece of florist wire and feed it through two or three stacked buttons. Take both ends of the florist wire and carefully push them through the center of one of the paper daisies. Twist one of the wires around on the back side of the paper flower and trim it in place. The other wire then becomes your stem. 
A fun way to display these paper flowers is to put them through the holes in the top of a salt shaker. I think this is an especially cute idea if you're going to be using it in your kitchen. A candle is always a great addition to tiered trays, but let's not just use a basic jar candle. Let's make a candle out of a cute teacup and saucer set. Melt down some old or thrifted candles in an oven set at 200 degrees. When the wax is melted, you can add some fragrance oil if you like and then pour the wax into your cup. I reused the wick from the melted candle, but of course, you could use a new one. I think this is much prettier than a plain glass jar and is very appropriate for a tiered tray in the kitchen. I still had the lid from the cigar box that I cut up, and it was pretty nice wood, so I decided to cut it in the shape of a cutting board. I made a pattern from a piece of paper, and then I traced around it onto the lid, and then I took the lid outside and cut out the shape with my jigsaw. The wood was a little oranger than I liked, and so I applied a coat of antiquing wax, wiping off the excess with a rag. I drilled a small hole in the handle and ran a little jute twine through it. I super glued a Dollar Tree clip to the front so that I could attach a picture or a recipe. As a finishing touch, I wrapped some pip berries around the handle. You could easily duplicate this project with any little scrap piece of wood you have lying around. I think a small wreath always looks cute on tier trays. So let's make a wreath using fabric we already have on hand. Cut a small piece of fabric into small strips and then begin tying the strips around something round. I used a notebook ring, but you could use a plastic bracelet, a shower curtain ring, a mason jar ring, really anything round. You won't be able to see it when you're done. Just keep tying strips of fabric on until the ring is completely covered. When you're done, trim up the edges and add a bow if you like. You can tie it or wire it to something else if you want. In addition to the Halloween wreath, I made a second one with more neutral fabric so that I could leave it out year round. But these little rag wreaths are an easy way to infuse a little seasonal color into your displays. If you've been making sweater pumpkins and still have some sweater scraps left, this project is for you. Cut a couple of skinny strips from your sweater and then stretch the strips out a bit, but not too much or they'll likely fall apart. Taking one strip at a time, fold it up, creating a little bunch in your hand. Add additional strips as desired. The more strips you add, the fuller your flower will be. When you're happy with the size, take a piece of florist wire and twist it around the bunch about three-fourths of the way down. Make sure it's very tightly twisted around the sweater pieces. Trim the sweater just below the piece of wire. Remove the fake flowers from a cheap stem and then hot glue your sweater pieces into the flower sepals. You can leave it as it is or you can trim the ends and you can hot glue a button or two in the center of the flower. What could be more perfect for autumn? than flowers made from sweater scraps stuck in an amber bottle. I thought we needed some cute matches to sit next to our teacup candle, so I printed out some images of vintage cottages. I sized them to fit on a small matchbox, and I mod podged an image both to the front and to the back of the box. 
so it would look good from both sides. I then cut a piece of black card stock and hot glued it to the side for a roof. As a finishing touch, I printed out some cupola images and added those to the roof. For a second matchbox, I used some striker paper that I ordered from Amazon to create a roof, and I think the striker paper looks like little roof shingles. I think these are so cute, and in combination with the teacup candles, I think they make a great gift idea. I'm going to make another one of these using a picture of my house. I'll have to let you know how it turns out. For the next project, I'm going to make some simple sunflowers using scrap fabric that I have on hand. I created a pattern out of cardstock and I traced around it onto a piece of plain cotton fabric. I'll include a downloadable pattern in the description box. Then I cut out a circle that fit perfectly inside my sunflower. I like to use fabric from old napkins and tablecloths. Pin the circle in the center of your flower and then using a simple basting stitch, stitch the circle in place. When you are about three-fourths of the way around, fill the center with some pillow stuffing. Then finish sewing the opening closed. You could, of course, sew these on the machine, but I like the simple rustic appearance of the hand stitching. You could also hot glue a stick or dowel rod in the flower and then put the other end in a slice of wood or other type of wood base to create a standing sunflower. I added some raffia and pip berries as embellishment. I'm curious, which do you like better, the little sunflower pillows or the sunflowers on a stick? I can't decide which I prefer. I decided I wanted to make a sweater pillow for the tiered tray, and I thought it would be fun if I used the part of the sweater with the pocket. So I cut out a square just slightly larger than the pocket, and then I cut out a second square for the back side. With the right sides facing each other, I hot glued three of the four sides together. Then I turned it right side out and filled it with pillow stuffing. I made sure the open side was along the bottom. To glue the bottom opening shut, Fold in both sides of the sweater and pinch it in place. Then apply hot glue just in the crease. Then you're ready to add any embellishments that you like. I added a bow out of twine and a few buttons. And then I put some cotton stems in the pocket. It's the perfect size for my tiered trays, and I can easily update it for any season by changing out the cotton stems with other flowers or plants. For the next project, you'll need a shot glass or one of those little buckets from Dollar Tree. Paint your bucket brown. While the paint is drying, Cut popsicle sticks to a length that is just slightly taller than the bucket. Hot glue the popsicle sticks to the side of the bucket and then paint them with the same brown paint. When the paint is dry, distress it a bit with sandpaper. Fold a strip of metal tape over on itself and then cut it into an even smaller strip. If you don't have metal tape, aluminum foil would work just as well. Wrap two strips of the metal tape around your bucket using just a tiny bit of hot glue at the beginning and end to hold it in place. You could put little flowers or pumpkins in it for decor, but I like the idea of putting toothpicks in it for practical use on your tiered trays. 
Well, we are to the last project and it is the easiest one of all. You can easily dress up some Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby clearance decor with a couple coats of chalk paint and use these as fillers on your tiered trays. I like to distress them a bit with some sandpaper once the paint is dry and then apply a coat of antiquing wax or white wax depending on the look you're going for. You can also add some ribbon or other embellishments to dress it up even more. Originally, I didn't like the shiny silver acorn, but now with the chalk paint, I think it's darling. And the former bronze leaf looks much better in moss green paint. I know there are a lot of really good tiered tray videos out there already, so I hope I was able to share a few new ideas with you today. Thank you all so much for watching and for leaving such lovely comments. I appreciate you all so very much. Until next Tuesday, bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.